Greetings. Peace be with you. I don't plan on making a habit of long introductions, but in the case of Francois Finlan, I really must. There's so much to be said. It seems to me that most people who've heard of Finlan are either students of European intellectual history or they're people like me, either Protestant or Catholic, who are looking for writing on the deeper Christian life and have found these very powerful letters of spiritual counsel, often as they're substantially diluted. And we're not always clear on who Fenelon was or what the context was in which he wrote. Francois Fenelon was born in 1651 of the finest aristocratic stock, raised in an ancient family castle, educated by private tutors in the classics, and in 1663, at age 12, was sent to the University of Caor, where he studied rhetoric and philosophy under the Jesuits. Fenelon was very important in 17th century France, and for a long time after that. And when I was in Paris a few years ago, I had my picture taken next to the bust of Fenelon, and I wanted to produce that here somewhere on the video, and I just that's just beyond my capability, so you'll have to imagine it. <clears throat> anyway, it was great. Um, Finlan was a priest, a theologian, a philosopher, a political reformer and theorist, and a deeply esteemed spiritual guide. And even as he rigorously embraced creedal orthodoxy, the creedal orthodoxy of the Christian faith as a Catholic, he was highly regarded by many of the emerging deists at the time, and even some of our founding fathers. For the bulk of his professional life, Fenelon was a regular presence at the court surrounding King Louis XIV. He had been appointed in 1689 as mentor to the king's grandson, called the Sun King or the Dauphin, who was presumed to one day take the throne. From this point of view, Fenelon observed with increasing consternation the narcissistic personality and behavior of Louis. He actually wrote the king an anonymous letter directly expressing the concern that Louis's personal needs were put far ahead of the needs of the people. And then he went on to write a novel for the Sun King himself, the grandson, in which he could present his concerns in a didactic way. The book, titled The Adventures of Telemachus, is a continuation of the story The Odyssey and features its central character as pursuing the virtues of love and unselfishness providing obvious contrast to the example of the king. The book became very well known to the public, was translated across Europe and admired by Rousseau and Thomas Jefferson and many others. And uh, Thomas Jefferson is recorded as having owned several editions of the book. Another point of significance is Finland's association with the controversial figure, Madame Guillaume. And I read some of Madame Guillon in one of the last videos I did. Madame Jean Guillon was a writer and spiritual guide who went on to become celebrated among many Protestants and still is. But she had an elusive streak in her teaching that was held highly suspect. Her manner of expressing concepts of detachment and abandonment to the will of God was too closely associated with the teachings of the Quietist movement which the church had condemned as being heretical. Fenelon was a close friend of Guillaume. In fact, he considered her his own spiritual guide, and he had confidence that he really understood her. And he worked to distill what she was trying to say and to defend her teachings. He wrote a book called Maxims of the Saints, in which he tried to show that the things she was saying were nothing new but that in their essence, they resonated squarely with the experiences of many of the saints throughout church history. The book was not of any real help, apparently. Her work was condemned and his defense of her eventually cost him his own professional stature. He was banned from the court and exiled to a bishopric in Cambria where he died in 1715. One of the most significant outcomes of this was that Madame Maintenon, who was Louis's mistress and later wife, decided to disassociate herself from Fenelon. She had admired both him and Madame Guillaume very much at one point and was the recipient of many of these letters. But after the writings of Madame Guillaume were condemned, she got wobbly about both of them and distanced herself. 
This may have been a move made in the interests of her own standing among the clerical authorities, and of course the king, who was not fond of Fenelon. It was over the course of these years in the court that Fenelon wrote most of his letters and short treatises. I'll read from a collection titled Christian Perfection, translated by Mildred Stillman and edited by Charles Whiston in 1946. Whiston writes, the material is primarily taken from various spiritual letters of Fenelon, a number of them to Madame de Maintenon, and from spiritual conferences held at the court of Louis XIV, where a small number of earnest people, under Fenelon's wise direction, sought to live the life of true and deep spirituality in the midst of court life, which was profligate and difficult. 